the gates with this message from newest eagle Jordan Howard posted on Instagram. On to a new beginning and couldn't be more excited to be a part of the Philadelphia Eagles. Fly, Eagles, fly. And speaking of new, check out the new digs we got here. Quick slants. We got the special stage now. We are big time. We've evolved into a great show because look at our sets now. But hey, look at it. <laughs> as we go forward, it's man. Great. Welcome to the Quick Slants presented by Nissan. I'm Barrett Brooks. There's so much room for activities. I'm Dave Zangaro. Harry Roseman said he was going to be patient. Absolutely. And he was, but then he went out and got himself a running back last night. Well, absolutely, you know, and Harry Roseman is chilling on <laughs> court side, going out there making these moves. But if you look at it, He's working the phone. He brings in Jordan Howard for a 2020 sixth-round pick. Could go to a fifth-round pick. When you look at his numbers, do you think this is a good idea for the Eagles? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. For me, it's a no-brainer to get this guy for a sixth-round pick. Like you said, it can become a fifth-round pick. Who cares? Uh, now, for I gotta, I gotta tell everyone, I was in the camp where I thought they should have gone out and, and signed Tevin Coleman or Mark Ingram, but. When you look at what they did here, it kind of falls in line with what Howie Roseman does. He loves the bargain bang guys. Absolutely. And, and you're looking at bargains, a six-round pick for a guy who has been third in the league since he entered it in rushing yards is pretty darn good. No question. You know, we need a back like this, a guy that's going to move the chain. If you look at it for the past three years, he's had over 3,000 yards. At this point, our lead back last year, or what we call a lead back in that three-headed monster we had, how about it? 511 yards. This guy can tote it, man. He can move the chain. First and second down, he can be that guy to go out there and really keep the offense on time, keep it moving. I think this is a perfect addition for this offense, giving them the opportunity now to not be set back with having to throw the ball on first and second down. Now we can run the ball, get some of that needed chunk yardage off. Now we have third and manageable as opposed to throwing the ball and then we're you know, third and ten as we've been in the past. You know, so I think this is a great move for the Eagles, giving them an opportunity to really go forward and have a more balanced offense. But the mindset's got to change, you know. <laughs> Can Doug change his mindset and be a guy that's going to go out there and run the ball and make sure they do it like they did the Super Bowl year? They I ran love, a ball. Man. I love that we have a new set, and you're not changing, man. You're on the I, run. I got to stay with, I got to stay real, man. We got to keep it real. I love the consistency. We win when we run the ball. When we don't run the ball, it's harder for us. Not to say we don't win, yeah. because we have a pretty special quarterback. But when we yeah. run the ball, it gives us an opportunity to keep the chains moving. And that's how you eat clock up and keep our defense off the field. Yeah, well, you mentioned Jordan Howard, and you did mention first and second down. And that's important to remember. He's not a traditional three down guy. He is a first and second runner, um, which means he gets out there and he gets those chunk yards. He's not a real big threat in the receiving game, but he's also not as much of a tell as Josh Adams was because this guy can block. Uh, he's shown that over his three years. And they're going to need that on third downs if they did have him in the game. Exactly. It won't be a telltale sign of them, all right, he's in the game now. You know, So I like I like the move. Yeah, and, and the important thing is touchdowns, too. This guy has nine touchdowns in each of his last two years. The Eagles running backs, the whole committee last year had 12. they got to find a way to get in the end zone, and this guy has been pretty consistent with doing that in his career. I think it's a good fit, and for what they gave up, it's, it's a no-brainer, right? Well, you know, I'm looking at this, man. I don't think it's a no-brainer. But why did Chicago let him go? Why, we understand mm. that another man's junk is another man's treasure. Why would they let a guy like that go, a guy that's proven the fact that he can go out there and be consistent at running the rock? Well, I, I think they already decided they weren't going to commit to him long-term. He has one year left, and the Eagles get him next year for just over $2 million, which isn't a ton of money. They, not they have all, over yeah. $20 million and cap space before the move. So they can fit him in, and, and he kind of got unhappy with his role. They took away some playing time in favor of guys like Tariq Cohen. Um, and, and they said an impact player. He though. certainly is. Um, the one thing that's a little troublesome is Matt Nagy couldn't figure out a way to use him, and obviously Nagy and Peterson come from the same tree. Right. Cut from the same claw. But remember, the Eagles found a way to use LeGarrette Blunt a couple years ago, and no one thought he fit. In the offense. I definitely didn't think he was going to fit. Exactly. So um, we, they've already shown, the Eagles have shown, they can find ways to get these guys involved. And, and I kind of think they're going to find a way to make Jordan Howard productive in this offense. Well, they're not going to have to work too hard because he really is a good running back. He's yeah. a good player. And he can go out there, like I said, move the chains that we were missing last year. Yeah, and he's not going to have to do it all on his own. The Eagles still have a few other running backs in the roster who have shown some flashes. Corey Clement, Wendell Smallwood, uh, Boston Scott, Josh Adams, those guys are still there, which leads me to this question. 
Are they going to draft a running back? Do they still need to? And what round makes sense to you? Well, you know what? They've always had the thing where they're going to go up and not draft by needs. You know, when they did, last time they did that, they got Marcus Smith, you know, a guy that really couldn't go out there and fulfill what they needed from the defensive line standpoint as far as being an edge rusher. So I think they're going to stay kind of what they've been doing and go out there and draft the best available player. So if you look at that, I'm talking around the fifth round, maybe the sixth round, and a guy that would fit real good is a local prospect, uh, Rock Hill Armstead, mm. out of Temple, really good and running Millville. back. And Millville. Uh, Millville too, Millville, mm -hmm. New Jersey. Yep. I'm talking about a big, he's a big runner back, not going to shy away from anybody. He's going to give you whatever you want when he's running the rock. He's not going to shy away from contact. He's going to get you before you get him. And he's an impact type of player that's going to move the chains. And I love that. As an offensive lineman, an ex-offensive lineman, I want a guy that's going to go out there and oppose his will on a defender. He's going to try to run you over as opposed to trying to run away from you. And we, you know, we have three backs that can do that right now already. They'll go out there, they'll make you miss. But this guy, he's not trying to make you miss. Yeah, and like what I like about this Jordan Howard move is it is just a one-year commitment so if you're thinking the Eagles don't have to draft a running back because they have Jordan Howard you're mistaken they can still go out and draft one I still wouldn't be surprised to see them use one of those second round picks on a running back there are a few guys who are still intriguing to me David Montgomery from Iowa State love that guy you thought there's Miles Sanders from Penn State they love him he was, Dude I mean, loves him. and we're talking about three down guys who could really be the future of the team and then you can use Howard is kind of a stopgap one-year player. And then Daryl Henderson from uh, from Memphis is another guy who makes sense to me. Uh, there are options there in the second round. And I just I don't think that you can worry about how they all fit right now because you're drafting for long-term, too. It's not like you're that's just available. drafting for 2019. So that's kind of the beauty of the Howard move and the beauty of a lot of these moves the Eagles have made this year. It doesn't change what they're going to do in the draft, nor should it. Well, absolutely. You know, we're talking about the best available player. If it happens to be a running back, go out and get a running back. The way this division is going, the running back has become a major, major force in how games are won. Look, in, in Dallas, Zeke Elliott, he's a guy that, you know, imposes will. You know, all you got to do is go up 95 in the Giants. You know, they have a great running back up there at Saquon Barkley. So I can see that, you know. Well, I, we'll, we'll see. We'll see, you know. They don't need those guys, though. I think that uh, as long as they're just, they just had to get better. Right. I mean, they couldn't go into a season with the run. Nothing against these guys, because I think that, you know, Corey Clement and Wendell Smallwood and Josh Adams, they can be a piece to the puzzle, but you, you just couldn't go into a season with those guys alone. You needed to get some help. The Eagles did it. They traded away a basically a nothing pick. It doesn't hurt them in the comp pick game, which Howard Roseman cares about. So it, it makes a ton of sense. Well, speaking of Howard Roseman, <laughs> all those guys were down – in Arizona for the owners' meetings. And, you know, one of the big topics was have Howard Rose was going to go out there and give Carson Wentz an extension. We talked about it. Here's what he had to say about it. We have a quarterback that we want to pay, that we want to extend long-term to, and how we're going to build our team with that player, which is exciting for us. I mean, we want to have a team led by a franchise-type quarterback um, we know that we have that in Carson. Obviously, uh, having Carson here long term is our goal, and um, we'll work towards that. Well, Dave, if you look at it, does this mean that we're going to give Carson with an extension this off season, or are we going to wait? Well, you know what's funny? You know, Howie Roseman said that on his own, unprompted, right, at, at the owners' meetings. And just a, a month ago, I was at the combine, and I asked him about preparing for this Carson Wentz contract, and he didn't seem very interested in right. talking about it then. And then, you know, a month later, magically, that's all he wants to talk about. I th I, I'm not saying this is definite it's going to happen this offseason, but I've moved pretty far. I think it's definitely a possibility. Um, what I would say is there's reasons not to do it right, right. this offseason for both sides. I mean, for Carson Wentz, he probably wants to prove he can be healthy. He wants to prove he can still be that MVP type of guy he was in 2017. And then get like $30 million. He's going to get $30 million anyway, um, but he can cash in even more. Well, I don't know. I mean, because, you know, at, at this point, both... Both sides have skin in the game if you look at it. If you look at the Eagles and their position on it, they can get him at a cheaper rate right now because health is definitely an issue. If he goes out there and gets hurt, they have him on the hook for, you know, 
talk probably thirty million dollars a year. But also Carson has some skin in the game also because you look at him. If he signs now, he won't get fair market value that other quarterbacks are getting right now because at this point he's getting for the low. He's getting for the cheap. It's like they're going in and giving him a hometown discount. But if he goes out next year and proves he's an MVP candidate, and he goes out and be a pro bowler, so what do you do then, man? It really puts you know both sides in a position where, all right, we have a reason to sign him. But we also have a reason not to sign him. Yeah, well, either way, eventually, I think we all agree, unless something catastrophic happens this year without yeah, a deal, they're going to sign him. I thought it was interesting. I asked Jeffrey Lurie if he'd feel comfortable signing Carson right now, you know, not seeing another year. Absolutely, he says, and he, he, was, he gave a ton of high praise for Wentz. I really thought he went over and, and beyond what he needed to say as the owner. They're in love with this kid. They're going to pay him. Um, like you said, though, there are reasons to hold off. I don't know how much of a hometown discount there would be right now. Uh, they know what they have in him, and I think he knows his talent. You're right. It would probably be a, a little bit of a discount. Either way, this guy is going to break the bank, and everything the Eagles are doing right now is preparing for that guy to make $30, $35 million a year. That's oh, yeah. why they're getting all these comp picks. They want to find ways to supplement his contract with younger and cheaper talent, and the only way to do that is in the draft. Well, if you look at it, you know, I think they've already committed to him being a guy that's going to be on this yeah. team and be the franchise. When you let a, a Super Bowl MVP just walk like that, it just goes to show that they are already tied to him. So is there any way that he's not going to get the money this year? Uh, yeah, I, I think there is. The, the way it works is if – the way it doesn't happen is if both sides agree, let's wait. We, we want this. You want to wait. Let's just wait off a year. We're going to pay you. You know we're going to pay you. Let's do it next offseason. I think that's still possible. Well, they already have it. You know, they already, they're already committed to him at this point. You know, But still to come, who has the bigger impact on this team, Jordan Howard or Deshaun Jackson? Also, plus Jeffrey Lurie says he wants to bring back the Kelly Green – and gray and you have an alternate for that midnight bring you think what do you think about that well we'll find out man we're well, going to go head to head on this one all right well we definitely have to decide that on quick slam we'll get back